Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I'm Shapiro Suleiman. Reports indicate that prices of farm produce are stabilizing in some northern states, which was attributed to bumper harvest being experienced as agricultural yields find their way to the market. Recent statistics show that the bag of maize now sells for 95,000 naira at against 105,000 naira. A bag of millet at 80,000 naira compared to 90,000 naira previously. Groundnut at 150,000 naira to 170,000 naira per bag as against the initial 200,000 last month. This cherry news is, however, coming on the heels of growing concerns over flooding and drought in some northern states, which crops, with crops worth billions of naira being lost to the natural disasters. In states like Jigawa, Hutsopa loses around 3,000 hectares to flood. The rain shortage earlier experienced in some states, coupled with food flood, currently ravaging not less than 10 states within the food baskets of the nation. There are fears the situation could exacerbate the hunger and the nutrition crisis plaguing the country. It is against this backdrop we'll be engaging with the president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, APAN, architect Kabir Ibrahim, on the stabilizing food prices and ways to mitigate the threats to food security in the country. We also have joining us uh, shortly on the platform for more perspectives on the conversation that is allowed in Hashim is the program director clean foundation but before we commence the conversation here are some tidbits there was no approval by the national assembly before the procurement of the new presidential jet for president bola metunubu daily trust findings have revealed late in june an online news platform reported that the nigerian government had acquired an airbus a330 8330 aircraft from a german bank According to Premium Times, the German bank had seized the aircraft from an um, unnamed Arabian prince and businessman who reportedly failed to pay hundreds of millions of dollars he owed the bank. Officials of the presidency, according to the online news platform, had kept their lips shut about the planned purchase of a new aircraft for the presidential air fleet. And there is growing disquiet within the Nigerian police force over the seeming plan to use the newly passed law to extend the tenure of the expected general of police, Kade Ebitoku, in office daily trust reports. Stakeholders within the security cycle spoken to said extending the IGP's tenure beyond what was already stipulated before the law was passed would destroy the system in policing institutions. They said apart from bringing stagnation for the other officers in the force, the internal security will be in jeopardy, arguing that security architecture needs constant rejigging. We'll now take a short break and when we return our conversation with architect Kabir Ibrahim comments. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. And welcome once again, architect Kabir Brian. Thank you very much. Um, beyond being the president of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, he has also so many caps to himself. <laughs> when you're talking about the agricultural sector, he uh, is, you know, um, very vast, held several positions, including the commodity aspect of it, I think. So we'll also be talking about all of that. Um, but let's start with this uh, tidbits that we've just read. The first one has to do with the presidential uh, aircraft, you know, the controversy around it. <laughs> no, you're not a politician anyway, but I know you, you may want to say one or two things. Let me get your perspective. Well, I honestly do not uh, have any hard facts on that. Yeah. I've had it just like everybody else. And if uh, there is need for the mm. president to have a new aircraft, so be it. But I think due process should be done. We should do due diligence before such a procurement. Mm. The tidbits alluded that there was no approval. And yeah, the National Assembly think, confirmed think, that. Yeah, well, I think there should have been approval. But nevertheless, that's not uh, what we are concerned with. We are concerned with food security in Nigeria. 
That's right. We'll talk about that much later. Um, yes, talking about due diligence and the need to follow due process and all of that. But then, tied to it also, when we're talking about food insecurity, and then we're having billions of naira being expended on aircraft, you know, 150 billion, some say, $100 million for this aircraft, you know. Uh, does it sound sensitive at this point in time? Well, I mean, if... You know, if you look at the present uh, situation, hmm. certainly if you buy anything outside food for Nigeria, it would, uh, people would raise eyebrows. Hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how aircrafts cost. I, I don't know whether 100 million is uh, the price of an aircraft anywhere. I, I don't know anything about it. Hmm. Like I said, I'm not going to be concerned with that. I'm hmm. concerned with uh, food and agriculture in Nigeria. That's right. Okay, the, the, third, the second tidbit uh, has to do with the tenure of the IGP, the Inspector General of Police. Uh, some say there are you know, plans to extend the, the tenure and um, also trying to tinker with the current law and all of that. Just to, uh, Do you have anything to say on that? Well, I believe um, our experience in the military, what happened to the military, is if it's anything to go by, we had so many... Uh, you know, people complaining about those uh, military chiefs overstaying and uh, making other people retire prematurely mm -hmm. because of, I mean, there was stagnation and all that. We should not have that uh, with the police. I, I believe if it's time for the gentleman to go, he should simply go because the other people will do the job anyway. That's right. Okay, let's just go into our conversation. Food security, I'm looking at the current state of things as president of all farmers association of nigeria first let's get your overview of the situation in the country because this has led to a lot of crisis if you like challenges in our country the recent protests you know that took place nationwide were actually um, um on the basis of the hunger crisis in nigeria uh, what's the situation uh, like well uh, over time I think from 2020, 2019, uh, this country has uh, been having challenges in the food system, but this was global. Mm -hmm. The uh, COVID-19 came with it, a lot of challenges. We began to feel the pangs of hunger in so many countries uh, from that time on. In Nigeria, we were unfortunate that uh, during the period between 2021, 2022, and even 2023, we had floodings and droughts in some places. We've, uh, this year, we had the NIMED predictions, and uh, we were told that uh, these things would happen, and they are happening. But uh, they are coming at the backdrop of uh, challenges that we have had in terms of uh, affordability. You know, okay. the, our currency lost a lot of steam, the purchasing power of our people went down yeah. and uh, so many things have happened and I believe yeah. the protests were mainly because people could not readily afford what they were used to having and uh, if this situation continues I see an exacerbation of the situation and unfortunately recently we've had uh, drought in so many areas and uh, floodings and all that uh, God forbid if uh, things do not uh, meet up our expectations, our situation would be dire, more dire. But I pray to God that uh, in some of the areas where there was this long secession, mm -hmm. rains have started falling. I am, even this before I came to the studios, one of my chairmen, I think, in Kwara said uh, they have not had rains in 38 days, except maybe today. It began to rain today and all that. And uh, we just hope that... Uh, the situation is not such that uh, the crops would not uh, get back mm. when they are nourished mm. by the soil. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think uh, some of these areas are not uh, spared by what has happened before. So if this happens now, the situation would be more. Mm. It's more worrisome now, I think, than any time. But we do hope that uh, b going by the predictions of uh, the rains coming up to November, people can still plant new things. You know, mm -hmm. Even plant where when the floodings recede, flood waters recede, they use the uh, residual moisture to 
plant again and all that. So maybe we would do a lot of work to mm -hmm. be able to remedy the situation. But uh, as I tell you today, mm -hmm. it's, uh, we are fearful that uh, the situation might be bad. Mm. Well, okay, quite um, a frightening you know, <laughs> outlook out there. But then you talked about uh, the, the fact that we are also hopeful that things will get better. Uh, I understand uh, our other guest is, 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 is making his way into the studio. So we'll take a short break uh, to introduce um, Dr. Salahuddin. And uh, when we return, our conversation continues. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. Now, Dr. Hash, uh, Salauddin Hashim, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Right. Um, just before we came in, I'm, I'm sure we must have had uh, some of the tidbits that we yeah. read. Uh, I know Elijah Kabir, you know, is not a politician. <laughs> uh, he, he gave us his perspective. But uh, as, as a member of the civil society, mm. one who is very keen, yeah. you know, in how the the, you know, governance accountability is taking yeah. in Nigeria. Um, I would like to get your comment on this, um, <clears throat> the controversial, you know, uh, parties of aircrafts for the president and, and all the issues around the seizure and what have you. Yeah, I think basically, again, it brings us to the uh, challenges that we have continued to raise about how subnational governments have continued to run us into trouble. Mm. Uh, what we saw clearly was... Um, uh, a state uh, who entered into an agreement didn't keep into some terms uh, because of uh, certain laxities. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, somebody came because of the politicking, mm -hmm. uh, therefore suspended uh, the previous uh, agreement. And, of course, uh, we are all in this kind of mess now. And the reputational damage mm -hmm. uh, is actually done. And that is the reason why we felt that um, uh, it is always very important to put additional searchlight on states yeah. uh, and some of the activities that goes on there. Uh, some of the states are even more indebted than even the federal government itself. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because again, the kind of uh, liberal uh, democracy that we practice or the kind uh, of um, federating unit that mm -hmm. we have continued the to, uh, this, this also has continued mm -hmm. to, you know, reinforce uh, the poverty line. And again, I mean, this has nexus uh, because state government are the ones who design policies that influences the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they have actually influenced the minds mm -hmm. of most Nigerians to focus on the center. And that is the reason why they have continued to get away with it. Okay. And until we get to that particular point oh. where people will hold the state to account rather than the federal government, mm -hmm. we may still continue to litter in this kind of uh, dismantle that we have. Right. What, what, what are your thoughts concerning the, the secrecy behind the whole deal? You know, the National Assembly is saying that uh, there, hasn't been, there has not been approval for the parties. Uh, you know, uh, the Senate president said not long ago that, yes, they are aware they're waiting for the request and all of that. But suddenly, you know, uh, an aircraft surfaced somewhere. So, <laughs> well, to be very honest, we are not surprised. Uh, this is actually uh, the kind of government that we operate uh, ever since we returned to democracy, where opacity mm. has continued to uh, permeate the entire governance system. Secrecy. Mm. Uh, and again, this is actually... Uh, something that uh, speaks to whether or not uh, we run an accountable system. Because again, uh, I wonder where public officers uh, put uh, even their own conscience when uh, they interact with citizens. And therefore, again, uh, you want to appeal to people's understanding oh. when you have consistently ensured that uh, they also have this trust deficit. Yeah. And trust deficit also emanates from your inability oh. to speak what is true uh, to the people. Because again, strategic communication yeah. is at the heart of a, democracy, a mm. democracy yeah. that is very functional. Mm. And it therefore means that people must trust you. Mm. And people can only trust you when they see some level of sincerity, mm. honesty, integrity yeah. in the kind of information that you churn out there. But when you continue mm. to churn consistent lies, and that is the reason why no matter what the state comes out to tell citizens, they do not trust. So mm. now you tell people to adjust, but you are not adjusting. Mm. And now you tell people to uh, find some kind of managerial approach to livelihood, but you are living large in a bourgeois mm. economy. So mm. this in itself creates a conflict. Mm. And this will continue until mm. we have that system where people can see of it true. We own this regime, mm. and owning it means that we will sacrifice for it and do all that matters. Right, okay, very quickly before we go back to Elijah Kabir, you know, on the subject matter, the issue of the, you know, plans to rather uh, concerns around the tenure of the 
extension of tenure of the IGP, mm. you know, through the new law and all of that. There has been concerns around it. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so let me give you a thought. Uh, that, that in itself is actually a fundamental issue. It is fundamental because uh, we feel that there uh, some level of uh, decisions are taken just to suit a purpose. Mm. Uh, and this in itself is actually a precedent that I think uh, ought to have been reviewed. And the idea is very simple. Mm. Uh, if you take a decision uh, and what you have simply done is you have set a precedent and that precedent can therefore go by someone who mm. therefore wants to deliberately abuse an office. Mm. And this in itself is something that really comes to mind. You have actually adjusted this because you want to achieve a specific objective. Uh, objective. And mm. that in itself you have done. Mm. But again, you, have, you may have done it in good faith. Mm -hmm. But the question is, would somebody else not come in the future mm -hmm. and therefore exploit for some other negative perspective? And this in itself is something that we call for concern. And mm -hmm. the process itself mm -hmm. uh, also suggests, now if you are going to deploy a process that helps to better the lots of the people, it takes a whole lot of time. But if you are going to do a process mm -hmm. to satisfy executive mm -hmm. intention, mm -hmm. then it is actually facilitated in such a... I think this whole idea was done mm -hmm. within uh, days. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, it readily comes to mind that, look, when government has the political intention mm -hmm. to be able to add value to the lives of the citizen, mm -hmm. it does not take time. Yeah. What we have not seen is actually the genuineness mm -hmm. of direction for it to be able to achieve. Right, okay. Uh, back to subject matter. Stomach infrastructure. <laughs> and then you earlier <laughs> painted a picture, you know, a worrisome picture concerning the, you know, the state of things in uh, the agricultural <laughs> sector. You know, the flooding that has been happening, you know, the drought that was witnessed at some point. About three weeks of cessation of rains. Uh, you talked about the, I mean, likely impact and all of But then there was also a cheering news that prices of food you know, are gradually coming down. Um, I reeled out the figures earlier, you know, maize, you know, uh, ground notes, uh, beans, and so on. Um, what exactly was the reason? Well, uh, there are many things that have happened uh, in the last uh, three weeks. If you remember that um, we had a stopgap uh, approval for importation of some Grains, grains uh, by withdrawing even tariffs and taxes on them. Mm. And if that is done transparently, it's supposed to cushion the effect of the hyperinflation that we've been having. Two, in some areas, like you mentioned maize, you mentioned uh, millet, and uh, but those are already coming into the market. Mm. And uh, for the first time, you know, since 2016, we might be seeing some semblance of uh, harvest prices. Mm. You know, I had said, I think in the studio, that uh, some intervention from the CBN probably caused this sustainable, if there is anything like sustainable, food inflation. Mm. You know, at some point we had uh, a, a, a crop of people, the CBN referred to as the prime anchors. Mm. Those people got money because uh, they came with a list of uh, what they call their outgrowers mm -hmm. and uh, they needed to give them some inputs and some money for labor and all that and they would buy back yeah. whatever they produce and it would be coming into the strategic reserve and thereby bringing food uh, at a low price but that did not happen because mm -hmm. those people instead went to the market and started buying and once there is inflation mm -hmm. and there is government intervention it will just exacerbate it yeah. but that all those so they, were uh, not, they were not producing but then buying to resell to the government yeah but you see this is the thing people were fearful that uh, if this thing was there and uh, they have had these experiences then they, this must be the cause of the wahala because mm -hmm. every year since i really began investing in agriculture i had noticed that mm -hmm. during harvests mm -hmm. prices automatically automatically come down in mm -hmm. fact there mm -hmm. were years when we had the, the gmp mm -hmm. the guaranteed minimum price government was helping to buy off certain mm. items that were produced so that the farmers would go back the following year to produce those same things. But mm. that, those, uh, that ceased mm. from 2016. Mm. You know, 2015 was the year that uh, the CBN yeah, uh, developed the Anko Broa. And then since that time, mm. up to today, we still have the problem of uh, no harvest prices. That is no 
low prices during harvest. But you have just said now mm -hmm. that uh, some semblance of yeah. reduction coming or downward down. uh, review of prices has started emerging. And mm -hmm. I hope that this continues. Yeah. But I said there were threat factors mm -hmm. because uh, if there are droughts and floodings, Mm -hmm. these things could be really threat factors to attainment of that right. and then but you know government in his wisdom mm -hmm. and this is a, a global thing once there is a turbulence in in food price mm -hmm. even if you have the competence in the competences you have the comparative advantage yeah. you open a window mm -hmm. to to be able to import mm -hmm. uh, you know a defined quantum mm -hmm. of a product which you have challenges with for a defined period mm -hmm. and that's why we we didn't take placards mm -hmm. to say that all the gains that we had made were going to be uh, eroded mm -hmm. because of the importation mm -hmm. because uh, government has said it would be for 150 days and it would be for <coughs> 500,000 metric tons you know it's, it's not it didn't get to even take up one month after but mm -hmm. then <laughs> looking at um, the i mean some of the the interviews that, that were conducted the farmers said it is because of the the harvest I mean, the bumper harvest, they call it. Uh, but isn't it too early to talk about bumper harvest when this crisis is already... Well, you, see, you see, this is the thing about hope. Right. You know, people will just hope that this is why something is happening. It's happening. But, you know, I come from Katsuna, and then we produce millet. Yeah. And the millet is always the first one to come home. Yeah. But I don't think it has started coming home even there. Yeah. So, so for anybody to say it's because it has started coming home that we have this price may be a bit ambitious but what i am attributing this to you know whatever you are seeing to mm -hmm. is this importation yeah. of some of the things yeah. and then if this is continued transparently mm -hmm. it might have an effect on the overall prices but you know some of these things honestly to tell you the truth are artificial mm -hmm. you know because we are blaming the middlemen we, mm -hmm. we the farmers sell at farm gate prices Mm -hmm. But of course, we don't use the urban centers like Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. and even Kano as benchmarks for prices. Mm -hmm. If you want food prices, you go to the rural areas, yeah. go to the yeah, farm gates, the and go to price. the small markets there. Mm -hmm. Because those people, those farmers would simply sell to be able to buy other things. So they don't go for the jugular. But the people who go there because of transportation costs, mm -hmm. uh, because of the uh, pri uh, cost of funds and all that, when they come into the city, they tend to hike the prices. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, in Abuja, you can say that there is food, but people cannot afford it. And therefore, there is really technically no food. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford it, it's not there. It's as good as not there. Mm -hmm. All right. Until <laughs> um, then, <laughs> you go to the market. Um, um, do you see a corresponding, you know, decline if you like in terms just like the survey has shown mm. um over time you know and in the last couple of uh, days or so um did you witness any um i mean coming down of the prices oh yes i mean uh, like he rightly mentioned uh, we uh, noticed a number of uh, decline uh, unfortunately uh, some uh, good policies uh, that uh, were rolled out perhaps are beginning to take effect. But again, yeah. like you also mentioned, the issue of accountability uh, in that process is also very fundamental. Yeah. And one of the things that we have also realized is that if this is sustained over time, yeah. because one of the things that we notice is that, look, people just get just quick response and cushion effect. Uh, but again, uh, yeah. there are also some uh, who benefit as a result of proximity to government corridors and they begin uh, to also buy and store. Uh, if that is not uh, uh, also uh, done, perhaps uh, we will get back to status quo and that would mean uh, a challenge. Food availability, food accessibility, and food affordability. There are three tripods uh, that uh, mm. need to be interrogated because if you must talk about food security, yeah. you must see them available, mm. they must be a, a, a affordable, yeah. and they must be accessible. And again, if you mm. check the entire parameters of what we have, uh, it's actually becoming a little bit, uh, you know, maybe some safeguard measure. Uh, that we have seen uh, very lately. Uh, tomatoes, uh, for instance, we have seen uh, mm -hmm. some other staples uh, are beginning to get some uh, level of um, 
affordability amongst uh, uh, the people. But mm. uh, one of the things that I find quite uh, challenging uh, is that when policies come for purposes of meeting uh, this kind of, then what are we doing behind the corridor to be able to reinforce and make it a little bit more sustainable? Mm. Uh, I don't know if uh, the president will speak to the issue of strategic green reserves across the country. Yeah. Uh, it is actually one of the key gaps Mm -hmm. uh, that we have actually not been able to see government uh, put some effort into. Uh, because again, to be food secure means that you must have storage. What mm -hmm. if we have famine, for instance? Mm -hmm. uh, so what would be the kind of response? Would you want to wait for a, some kind of uh, import? Before importation will come, if you have war or stuff, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the top gap measure? Mm -hmm. And we have also noticed that the ones we have, uh, and of course, w most of them are empty. Uh, for where you <laughs> have, where you have <laughs> them with something inside, yes. they have also uh, been allocated to uh, some traditional institutions. Uh, and again, these are some of the conversations yeah. that we also need to have as a country. Yeah. How do we make citizens a priority, particularly when it comes to the issue that borders around food? I think that is fundamental. Yes, talking about the strategic reserve, talking about you know having. Um, parameters, you know, to address uh, post-harvest losses, like he talked about the, the tomato, which is actually coming down in terms of price, but then how do we preserve it? How do we sustain this and all of that? Um, and also talking about the, 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 the strategic reserve, you know, which largely was said to be empty, and, but then, yes, government keep talking about it. We are bringing in this into the system, and Nigerians are yet to see all of that. <laughs> How do we reconcile these well, issues? I, I don't know. I think before he came, mm -hmm. I alluded to uh, the intervention of the CBN eroding the possibility of having mm -hmm. low prices at harvest. Yeah. It is, you know, the guaranteed minimum, minimum price is uh, hinged on the ability of a government that wants the future of its people to be secured to be able to intervene oh. when at harvest the farmers are not getting the best then they buy off yeah. at a guaranteed minimum price mm -hmm. such a, such that the farmers can go back yeah. and it is that yeah. surplus that you keep in the strategic reserve mm -hmm. this is what happens in the united states mm -hmm. and the, all the people all the places where they say they have food security mm -hmm. but since the intervention of the CBN, and I want you to really understand this, mm -hmm. I was one of the people who had escorted Mr. President to Kebi where the Anko Borua was uh, kicked program up, yeah. was flagged off. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I have noticed that we have not had good harvest prices of commodities. Mm -hmm. And Why? this is simply because mm -hmm. the program was not really well anchored. Okay. Now, uh, because of that, from 2015, I remember having a, a discussion with the uh, then spokesperson of the president on NTA. Okay. And I, I mentioned that um, even though, you know, we have planned 1.3 million okay. metric tons uh, strategic reserve, okay. we hardly had 15,000 metric tons at that time. Okay. And then because... There is inflation. You know, food inflation is now like 40%. It has come down to 39 point something percent. It kept growing from that time to this point. Now, once there is inflation, it, it will be foolhardy to intervene by buying from the same market that other people do because that would exacerbate the inflation. Yeah. Because yeah, the government, government yeah. when it buys, it yeah. buys through contractors or vendors that yeah. put a premium. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. and and that would make it difficult for ordinary people to buy from the same market, mm -hmm. and that is why probably you still don't mm -hmm. have enough in the in the. In fact, you have nothing now. Yeah. You know, before they said we had fifty-two mm -hmm. metri thousand metric tons, and they gave out forty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. They kept ten, you know, for any day, anything mm -hmm. that, that happens, and then you cannot also replenish mm -hmm. because there is inflation. And to that extent, the window to even import. That's how it found its way. Mm. Because we don't have anything in the reserve, that's why we agreed to the importation. Now, what, what, what government mm. is doing, and I think we are talking with government, and luckily, you know, we are in some of the programs mm. that, you see, what you should do to have sustainable food security or food availability or food sufficiency in mm. the country is to be able to mm. ask, I mean, to help the farmers to scale their productivity mm. so that internally you have food. 
it will counterbalance what you had to Im import. Yeah. And then over time, you get to a position where you become really sustainable. Mm. There is, you know, this has happened in many countries. Right. If you remember, even right now, the, the situation in Argentina is very bad. Mm. But uh, they had invested in so many technologies, in techniques of mm. production that, in fact, uh, you know, recently we had to import about... I, I think two vessels came, the third one maybe, on the, I'm a poultry farmer because oh. they wanted to help the, the poultry farmers mm -hmm. because we were buying from the same market as the, those people buying from human co for human consumption. consumption yeah. uh, <laughs> a window opened when uh, mm -hmm. we could bring in uh, mm -hmm. maize from Argentina. Mm -hmm. so, so this is it. Argentina yeah. is now getting out of mm -hmm. its problems yeah. because it had invested internally yeah. in technology and the, uh, the production has been scaled. And they are there, and I, we hope that Nigeria would get to that level because yeah. there are many, many things now in the pipeline mm -hmm. that I am saying that if they are done or carried out transparently, mm -hmm. we will be able to, to really laugh at yeah. the end of it all. Okay, talking about uh, you know investing in, 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 in the sector and what have you, um, I mean, beyond the importation or the waivers that the government is providing, and this is the peak time, you know, the government should be able to do something uh, earlier, we were talking about the the flood or the drought that is being witnessed, and all of that, and the need to sustain, you know, the farming. I mean, to extend the farming season. Um, some are, are saying that there is need to invest in irrigation, for instance, so that we can have, um, you know, all year farming uh, activity, you know, beyond the the, the wet season. Um, how much of this, I mean, uh, uh, investment are you seeing from the government in terms of providing the uh, the machineries, you know, I mean, they, and then providing fertilizers and so on. Well, you see, uh, luckily, you would see uh, the CBN that I had been castigating mm -hmm. was able to give uh, Nigeria 2.1 million metric tons of uh, grain, I mean, fertilizers that are supposed to be given to the farmers free of charge. Mm -hmm. The government here at the center tried to distribute this through the states mm -hmm. and then well, it's work in progress, but there are complaints. Are there, there result? There, that is the question. Because are many complaints. farmers are there, saying they are not yeah, seeing it. No, no. There are, the complaints are uh, predicated on the, some of the subnationals claiming that it's from them. Some of them are even selling. No, they, the, the, there are issues is, about repackaging and all of that. Yeah, but th these mm -hmm. are, I mean, in, including the, the rice yeah. palliative, the, the, you know, but this is all in the social media. I, I believe some states... Yeah, there were videos also to support that. I think I've seen so one the videos where they are, are also, uh, the... <laughs> the videos, unfortunately, are also products of social media. But mm -hmm. whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. agriculture itself and the people are really in the public, in the domain of the subnationals. Mm -hmm. we, we, I mean, we, there is no... Nobody can say that uh, Kaduna State, for instance, is not under the Kaduna State government. Mm -hmm. Even though you have a federal government, the federal government is supposed to create the enabling environment for the right thing to be done. So it's the subnationals that should do it. Yeah. And the agriculture especially is a rural vocation. Yeah. It takes place in the, in the states and the local government areas. Largely. And everywhere in the world, that's yeah. what happens. If you go to rural England, that's where they produce. If you go to the United States in the rural areas, that, in yeah. every part of the world, yeah. is the rural areas that will produce the food that the urban areas eat. And that's why we even talk about this urban migration. Yeah. When people leave their there are localities to come to the urban place we say is a, is, is, is a negative thing oh. because they are leaving the production food production to come to the oh, white the jobs and all that so, <laughs> the, to, the truth is, is the truth is mm. and we must face it and even yeah. though you say i'm not a politician the, every human being is a politician the yeah. thing that we must do is we must be able to hold people accountable yeah. we must be able to do things transparently we must be honest and we must not allow people to get away with any malfeasance right. for any nation that will really amount to anything at all yeah. it should have zero tolerance for corruption right. if you look at what mm. is happening in it's a small country singapore mm. singapore they have very zero i mean they have really mm. done a lot against corruption and now they are first world you can't go there and even mess up yeah okay hold the leadership accountable um, uh, um, um salahuddin a number of um, interventions have been you know, thrown out there by the government um, in, in areas of palliatives, you know, um, uh, the, 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 I mean, even the waiver, we're talking about import waiver and whatever, even though uh, the importation is yet to even take place, uh, we're still talking about um, less than four months uh, for the window to, but yet, they are yet to get it right in terms of the um, 
what do you call it, the conditionalities now, uh, you know, the guidelines as to who is who should be involved in this and how is it going to take place and all of that. But Nigerians cannot wait for all of this. The hunger crisis is excessive, it's deepening. People are dying of hunger, you know, and a number of people cannot afford, you know, to eat, you know, three square meals or so. People are resorting to eating things that are also even not healthy. Mm. People are dying as a result of um, eating contaminated food and all of that. How do you think, I mean, how much do you think we can do in terms of holding the leadership accountable uh, for the result? Because that is the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll just paint you a quick picture. Uh, first quarter of uh, 2023, uh, there were about 66 uh, million uh, Nigerians there about uh, uh, that are within that uh, hunger crisis uh, uh, corridor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, uh, by first quarter of 2024, we have over 100 million Nigerians. Mm -hmm. uh, so that tells you uh, the kind of threats uh, that we have. That is on the one side. Two uh, is the issue that borders around uh, investment. And of course, we talked about uh, agricultural equipment. I can I can dare you today, if you go to most ministries of agriculture in most states, mm -hmm. you'll find agricultural agri equipment that are rotting, mm -hmm. uh, that have either been rusted, uh, that have been procured, but because of certain political uh, mm -hmm. investment in the entire value chain, uh, those things are rotting away. Mm -hmm. Three is the fact that uh, the budgeting system in this country is very faulty. If you go to Ministry of Water Resources, you'll find agri equipment uh, that are inherent in it. Go to Ministry of Agri. Go to some other ministries, you will find those things in the budget. But because it is for purposes of budgeting alone, and people are only interested in the procurement components, so they buy and they just store. And those things will rot in a way, and once somebody comes and... and this in itself is actually taking away, uh, is actually increasing wastage. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we are doing basically is we are introducing police, politics into what will survive uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. And the third bit of it for me, which is most fundamental, is that we are also uh, not uh, looking at uh, the uh, end product. That is what should uh, add value to the entire space. I'll give you an example. Uh, in, in, in Netherlands, uh, one of the things they have done very greatly is that they farm all year round. Yeah. Very small country. Mm -hmm. uh, what they earn from cheese alone, I'm sure uh, the mm -hmm. president here will be able to attest, what they earn from cheese alone is much more than what we earn from our crude oil. Mm -hmm. Just cheese. In fact, it is twice the amount. And I'm happy uh, that uh, the uh, federal government this time around uh, have decided that, okay, for purposes of solving multifaceted uh, problems, that we are going to set up the Ministry of Livestock. Yeah. Uh, maybe that means the future of this country is animal husbandry. And we need to begin to look at that direction. Find a way to increase the interaction between the farmer and the header in such a way that it used to be that people would not be able to invest a lot of energy in whether or not you bring uh, fertilizer. That they have organic approach to growing issues. Now in terms of holding leadership to accountable, one of the things and where it should start from is budget monitoring. Yeah. Agri budgeting, I have told lots of people and several times over is one of the budget that is actually embedded with lots of challenges. ICPC released a report post-COVID, over 1.6 trillion or thereabout found in an individual account, an officer in the Ministry of Agriculture. That report is there. Uh, ICPC did that report. I mean, nobody did. But again, which government agency was meant to prosecute? As a matter of fact, the reason why that report made daylight was because the person uh, in question actually died of COVID, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, he, maybe again, he hasn't seen that money mm -hmm. in the past. And over 200 properties thereabout or so were also linked to that same account. So it tells you very clearly that there are people who are actually smiling to the bank at the detriment of the citizens. So we must actually look at our budgeting system again. It is not working yeah. the way it is currently constituted. Yeah. The envelope system has proven over time to be a conduit pipe for waste yeah. and it is indeed not adding value. Yeah. Now the president needs to go back to the zero-based budgeting approach. Yeah. Needs-based assessment. Yeah. What exactly do we need? How do we plow this money? Put your resources where you know you will gain value in return. Return on investment. We must run government as though we are running business. Mm. 
But unfortunately, that is not the case. How on earth are we able to take monies meant for feeding the majority of the people and then certain individuals? I mean, we saw what happened in the Ministry of Humanitarian mm. yeah. and how people have taken so much money meant to respond. Res emergency response in this country mm. has become a floodgate uh, for corruption. No country survives on palliative. But over the years, we have turned palliative into a consistent policy handle. It does not work. It is not sustainable. It is never going to work. Huh. What we need to do is to find something structural, something responsive, and something that can be sustainable. Right. That, for me, is the way out. Right, okay. Dealing with corruption, also prioritizing our needs and all of that. Uh, let's look at, you know, as leaders of farmers in Nigeria, yeah, perhaps Mr. Um, Salaudi is talking about improving interaction. How much of this interaction that, that, it, that is changing the narrative? Billions of naira taxpayers money trillions even have been expended on things that are not a present need right now for instance if you take a 15 trillion naira to do a highway a super highway you are taking 150 billion naira to buy an aircraft and all of that in a country that is facing acute you know food shortages are we really prioritizing the needs well you see uh, as far as i'm concerned i'm happy that uh People are challenging these things, and uh, I believe uh, not only a doctor is talking about it, everybody in Nigeria is talking about it, and therefore we will probably uh, restructure our priorities. Now the priority is for people to put food on their tables. We cannot, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an architect, I, I like, uh, mm. this your building is very magnificent, you built it, you are disseminating information, you are making contributions to nation building and all that. That's why you did this, but you wanted it to have a kai, a, an eye-catching uh, presence and all that. Now, if we do a highway from one place to the other, we are making our country look good, look uh, highly urban and all that. Mm -hmm. But then, when you build a, a road for the amount you mentioned, and the people are not are even driving their last cars, <laughs> so what, what are you doing? So. Try to look at, you know, prioritize or justify yeah. projects before embarking on them. And that is, I think, the way we began. Hmm. If, you, if you say, look, we want to do this. If as an architect, I go with a proposal to any government uh, agency, they would ask me to, to justify it. Hmm. That's right. Look at all the justifications, yeah. why you need to do it. Yeah. If you do a rural road, for instance, mm. to get food from pl place of production to place of need, that is understandable and it's quite okay. Mm. If you build a road, however, that would look fanciful mm. and your country would be seen to be coming into the first world and all that because of that infrastructure. But the infrastructure is not serving the people mm. because the people are... The other infrastructure, infrastructure is neglected. The so so, so is probably, neglected. probably we should mm. start, uh, you know, reappraising our priorities and it is very important that we just don't do budgets for for the sake of budgets we need to do budgets because we need to do these things and then we have to really implement these budgets yeah. we must do it transparently to the satisfaction of everyone and anybody who is saddled with any responsibility will be will have to be held accountable for that responsibility but if it is so open that you know this is just uh, like a cliche yeah. you know we have this and that's all mm. then it doesn't make sense right. you know that's it's like in your house if you if you say okay probably today you buy chicken and they they, they, they roast it tomorrow they grill it another time they make paper soup meanwhile the children do not like do not get their indomie that they are used to mm. they will say well baba is buying this thing because he likes eating chicken <laughs> but meanwhile we are starving Mm. So it's the same thing. Right. If, if we want to buy aircrafts, for instance, we want to buy, we want to build these big roads and the majority of Nigerians don't have food, mm. Nigerians will not praise you for doing that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> where is the role of the National Assembly in all of this, for instance? Because accountability you know, goes just beyond the executive arm. Yeah. Monies are being expended, taxpayers' money on behalf of the people in court. But in most of this um, scenarios, you find out that monies are not even properly appropriated. Yeah. Uh, like the century we were talking about, it was not part of the budget. You know, well, it was just it just came up, and then they are, have to do find <laughs> find a way around it. And then the 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 the, the aircraft that was purchased also, 
you know, National Assembly is saying that it hasn't been approved properly and all of that. So what, what is the role of our National Assembly in holding this uh, leadership accountable? Well, unfortunately, uh, the National Assembly has become like uh, the uh, industrial scale for budget padding uh, since uh, the last few years. And um, where they are meant to oversight, uh, they suddenly develop cataracts. Hmm. And then, of course, uh, because of the cataracts, then they either refuse or deliberately don't see uh, hmm. a number of things. The role of the National Assembly is to oversight, yeah. uh, is to make law, and of course, to deliberate on issues. I think, again, it is unfortunate that uh, we have an elite capture of the society. Uh, the elite capture of the society has created some kind of barrier where people and the bourgeois uh, believe that, well, when you speak and you are too vehement, it is because you are poor. Uh, and then again, that rich men don't talk when they are eating. Uh, and that is exactly uh, what we see uh, happening. But I tell you one thing very quickly, uh, is the fact that all this budget and how they perform is actually the role of the National Assembly. Yep. That is not seen. The problem would always begin, one, at the point where the envelope system is, mm. the, the memo yep. is actually issued. Secondly, at the point where uh, this uh, budget defense yep. also happened. Yep. Then at the point of oversight. Yep. Then the point where the audit yep. should happen. Because the circle mm. is only completed right. when the Auditor General actually presents uh, the report to the National Assembly and it signs that oh, Okay, uh, uh, Kabir, <laughs> lastly, you know, with all the challenges we are facing and the prospects we are also looking at, what do you think needs to be done very quickly so that we can sustain this, um, you know, food security efforts that we're making as a country? Well, you see, we need to look inwards. Mm. They, of course, you know, palliatives, importation, and all those things cannot give us sustainable food security. Yeah, it right. is here we need to invest to make the farmers to scale their productivity so that Nigeria would have food sufficiency and then the much desired food security. So investment, investment by government, by everyone, the private sector, and subnationals especially, should be done within country. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Architect Kabir Ibrahim, President All Farmers Association of Nigeria. Thank you very much for your informed perspectives. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Salahuddin Hashim, uh, uh, Program Director, Clean Foundation, we also appreciate your coming. Thank you for having me. And viewers, this is a wrap on today's edition of Daily Politics. Uh, we sincerely hope you found the conversation engaging and informative. Join us tomorrow. We'll be back with another interesting topic and personalities. Until then, I'm Shafi Wusilem, and many thanks for being there.